Hey everyone, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Sigmund Freud and going over some practice questions related to Sigmund Freud and some of his theories and just overall contributions to the field. So stay tuned. The first thing we're going to be looking at is uh, psychoanalytic theory, right? So a snapshot of this information of Sigmund Freud was the founding father of psychoanalysis, a method for treating mental illness and a theory that explains human behavior. Freud believed that events in our childhood have a great influence on our adult lives and shaping our personality. Going into his theory of psychoanalytic theory, um, believes that the way people behave is also being influenced by our unconscious thoughts, feelings, desires, and memories. So, you know, he's really just kind of expanding upon like, wait a second, you know, the way people behave, the way people act, there's more to it. And, and it's not just uh, what we may think. And then we go into psychoanalysis, which is the goal of psychoanalysis is to uncover repressed emotions and experiences. Uh, by making the unconscious conscious, we can appropriately address them. So Freud's proposing because we're being influenced by all these things we're not aware of, it's important for us to be aware of these things so that if there's anything that we may want to change about our behavior, we can change it. And kind of giving some of his uh, origins of where it originated from, according to Freud. Cathexis, Freud's term for the psychic energy or urges for things such as our desires, wishes, et cetera, that drive human behavior. So Cathexis is saying, you know, hey, these things right here is what's really kind of propelling us to why we act the way we act, whether it's something that we're wishing for, our desires, again, that psychic energy. And when we go to anti-Cathexis, used to restrict the urges of the id, and we'll get into the id in a moment, and keep repressed information in the unconscious mind. So with the anti-cathexis, it's working opposite, opposing to the id. And with that being said, Sigmund Freud believed that there are three levels of consciousness. The three levels of consciousness, the first one, the conscious mind. So with the conscious mind, you are fully aware of your thoughts and ideas. With the pre-conscious mind, uh, thoughts and ideas outside of your immediate awareness, you are not thinking about that information at this moment. If you needed to recall that information, you could by thinking about it. So again, these are those things that, you know, let's say if someone asks you for your number, you may not know it right off the top of your head. You're not floating around as you go through life with your number just kind of you're plastered at the forefront of your mind. But if someone asks you for that information, you could recall that information. And we have the unconscious mind, the opposite of our conscious mind. We are unaware of our thoughts and ideas. They cannot be accessed or brought into full awareness by ourselves. So this is where things such as therapy will come into play so that we can address anything that needs to be addressed in an appropriate manner. So again, that's what I like to call a snapshot of Freud's psychoanalytic theory. So now let's look at the structural theory of personality development. So Freud proposes that with the id, uh, the primitive and instinctive part of our personality, the only part of your personality present at birth, uh, the id is impulsive and operates in the unconscious level. It operates off the pleasure principle and the pleasure principle seeks immediate gratification and is part of the personality that wants to receive satisfaction for things such as sex, eating, drinking, fun, anything that feels good. The id side of the of our personality is saying this is what I'm in the mood for. This is what I have an urge for. Um, therefore, I want it right? It's, it, it's very direct, right? If I feel, if I'm in a mood for it, this is what I want. I'm not really paying attention to anything else. Now, when we look at the ego, the ego wants to satisfy the id and the superego. We'll get into the superego in a moment. The ego considers social realities, norms, etiquette, and rules in deciding how we should behave to get our desires met. The ego operates off the reality principle the reality principle is the awareness that we live in a society that has laws and social norms. So we can't just do whatever we want or, you know, feel like it in the moment, which again is like that, that is our, our primitive desires, our instincts, um, or have desires to do again the id because there are consequences to our actions if we were to do so. 
The ego acts as self-control and practices delayed gratification so the ego can think of a compromise to meet the needs of the id and the superego as best as possible. And again, we're jumping to the superego in a second. But the ego acts as a bit of a referee, right, between um, as a mediator, I guess you could say as well, of saying, wait a second, we understand what the id wants, we understand what the superego wants, and I know what I want, but at the same time, I'm not fully going to give into this side or that side. We're going to come up with a nice compromise that can get our needs met as much as possible while adhering to the society that we live in. Because again, the id is saying, hey, this is just what I want. I'm in a mood for this, so I'm going to just go get it. And the ego is saying like, wait a second, hold on. We're not just going to go with what you want. And the super ego is like, no, no, no. I want this over here. I want to do this. And we'll jump into that right now. So the super ego is made up of two parts, our conscience and our ego ideal. So the conscience one half that makes up the superego includes information about things that are viewed as bad by parents and society. Um, think of the, the, the should nots. Um, I shouldn't skip school. These behaviors are often forbidden and lead to bad consequences, punishments, or feelings of guilt and remorse. And the other half of the superego is the ego ideal, which is the other half that makes up the superego. That includes the rules and standards for behaviors that the ego aspires to. The superego tries to perfect and civilize our behavior. Think of the shoulds. Um, I should volunteer more often. It should. Uh, it works to suppress all unacceptable urges of the id and struggles to make the ego act upon idealistic standards instead of realistic principles. And when we mix them all in a pot, remember, we're taking the, the conscious and the ego ideal, we're mixing it up and it creates the super ego. And ultimately, the super ego is um, it develops around the age of three to five years during the phallic stage. And we'll jump into that in a second. Uh, the part of our personality that wants to be a good and better person um, by incorporating concepts of morality, ethics, justice, and right from wrong into our decision making on how we behave. That's why we may feel a uh, quote unquote good feeling when we do what's quote unquote right in a guilty feeling when we do something that's wrong. Um, the super ego tries to perfect and civilize our behavior. It works to suppress all unacceptable urges of the id and struggles to make the ego act upon idealistic standards instead of realistic principles. So in short, the id is saying, hey, this is what I want. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm in a mood for. Again, whether it's those primitive, instinctual type of desires that we all have, um, and it just wants to act on them. The super ego is saying, wait, 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 we want to be um, the best version of ourselves, the highest self, right? Um, the highest morality, everything like that. And the ego, the ego has the ultimate final say, right? We're aware of our ego. Those are the thoughts, our perception, et cetera, right? We're aware of, you know, what's going on. And we're looking at our natural desires of the id, those primitive instinctual desires. And we're looking at the super ego and the ego is acting as the mediator, the referee, um, however you want to refer to it as and saying, you know what, you know, the ego has, we have our own desires um, and, you know, we want to get these needs met and we want to get these needs met, but we want to do it in a way where it's socially acceptable and not just do it whatever we want and create all this anarchy and everything. So it's the mediator between the two so that all needs are met as best as possible while adhering to the world we live in. Now let's jump into Freud's five stages of psychosexual development. Um, so Sigmund Freud proposed that our personality develops from birth through adulthood as we go through five stages called the psychosexual stages of development. Each stage has sexual energy or libido to satisfy. The more stages appropriately satisfied, the healthier the person. Each stage expresses sexual energy in different ways at different ages and through different parts of the body as the erogenous zone, which are parts of the body that excite sexual feelings when touched or stimulated. So oral, that's the first stage. Uh, oral is uh, present from birth to one years old. Focus is on the mouth. It is present from birth. Ego develops within the first three years. So just kind of putting that out there as well. Uh, 
the next stage is anal, and that's from one to three years. Focus is on the bladder. Then there's the phallic uh, stage, which is three to six. And the focus is on the genitals. And the Oedipus complex and the Electra complex need to be resolved. Uh, the superego develops. So uh, keep in mind as well, if we get a question referring to the Oedipus or the Electra complex, um, they're more so talking within this stage. So uh, keep that in mind. Then we go into the latency, which is six years old to puberty. The libido is dormant and sexual impulses are repressed. Focus is on learning new things, school and friendships, often socializing with the same gender. And lastly is the genital. Um, this is from puberty to adulthood. And the focus on the libido or sexual energy become uh, becoming active again, and we develop an interest in sexual partners. And when we look at the last bullet point, um, the healthier the upbringing uh, needs were met slash libido was appropriately satisfied equals the healthier the person will psychologically be as they grow up, the more challenging the upbringing needs were not met at one or more stages slash libido was appropriately satisfied at one or more stages equals developing psychological issues slash fixations, which is when one's desire is tied to an object of desire connected to an earlier stage and the psychosexual development that were not appropriately satisfied. So again, it's almost like we kind of get stuck in a way where, you know, we have these fixations because earlier in our development, our needs were not fully or just appropriately met. And here I have a tip for you guys. Uh, associate Freud with an acronym. You can use mine or create your own. Do what works best for you. So for myself, um, I came up with this acronym because we want to be able, we don't have to know every single detail about every single thing. That's just information overload. But we do want to know uh, when it comes to Freud, we do want to know Freud, his uh, psychosexual stages of development and what at each stage, what it kind of entails. And an acronym helps with that. Right. So <laughs> I couldn't think of, I couldn't definitively think of one because I'm looking at the O, the A, the P, the L, and the G. And I'm like, what acronym could, you know, we think of? Of course, we could think of things that start with an O or an A, like octopus, apple, but we want to make it, uh, we want to associate it to Freud. And since Freud was talking about psychosexual development and everything, I'm like, okay, so let's kind of go with this. <laughs> Out and proud, let's get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, oh, okay, that works. Out and proud, let's get it. And we're entering the month of June, uh, which is Pride Month. So uh, out and proud, let's get it. If you have another one, rock out with that one. And 136PA, 136PA, one is the highest um, age for the first stage, which is oral, right? So it goes from birth to one years old. For A, which is the anal stage, that goes from uh, one to three. Next is the phallic stage, which goes from three to six. And then we get into puberty, which is in the latency stage, and then the genitals for adulthood. So if we can remember <laughs> out and proud, let's get it. Um, and then one, three, six, P, A. We're good. So if we get a question on an exam that's referring to something happening at age five, um, it's most likely occurring in the anal stage. Why? Because for the anal stage, it happens between the age of three to five. And if you have other acronyms that work, uh, drop it down in the comment section below. Because again, whatever acronym we come up with, we want to be able to associate it with the topic that we're discussing so that it's easier to remember. Okay, practice question time. I have three practice questions for you guys just to see if we're retaining the information, all right? So the first question, a social worker is meeting with a 30-year-old woman due to stress from her job. The woman will often overeat to cope with her stress. According to Sigmund Freud's stage of psychosexual development, what stage did the woman likely experience issues in early development? So we have A, the phallic stage, B, the anal stage, C, the oral stage, and D, the latency stage. Take a second, pause the video, unpause it, then come back. Okay, if you picked C, then you are correct. 
So some of you may be saying, wait, Ray, why is it C? Why is it the oral stage? Uh, well, the question is asking, because of the, according to Sigmund Freud's stages of psychosexual development, so that's how we know, okay, psychosexual development, okay, I'm thinking of our acronym, whatever acronym we use, and the 136PA. Uh, now that we had that kind of like in our mind, again, I encourage you to write it down when you get to the exam, just so you don't forget it on a piece of paper or anything that, that they may supply you with. Now that we know that, and they're saying, hey, wait, overeating, the fixation we know about that occurs in the oral stage. Because remember, oral is associated with the mouth. So that's how we're able to draw that conclusion. There are certain fixations associated with each stage that can occur in adulthood if we experience issues in early development. So our needs weren't getting met or you know uh, the, the right appropriate amount of stimulation. And that would occur in C, the oral, because remember, the oral stage, it deals with the mouth. The other stages deals with other parts of the body or stages in general, such as the um, puberty stage or in going into adulthood. Now let's look at question number two. Um, according to Freud's structural theory of personality development, what part of the personality operates off the reality principle? A, id, B, the ego ideal, C, super ego, or D, the ego. Again, pause the video, take a second, unpause it, and select your answer. Okay, if you picked D, then you are correct. Why? Because with the ego, remember, the ego operates off the reality principle. The id operates off of the pleasure principle. And with the ego ideal, the ego ideal is a part of the super ego. And the super ego is about being our, our, our best, greatest self, high morality, ethics, etc. But the ego operates off the reality principle where the ego when it gets its needs met, right? The ego has its needs, but it's saying, wait a second. This is the world we live in. We want to abide by the law, social norms, etc. cetera. Um, and that's the reality principle, not the id, not the ego ideal or the super ego, the ego. And question number three, uh, Sigmund Freud proposed that our personality develops from birth through adulthood as we go through what Freud proposes as the psychosexual stages of development. What are psychosexual stages of development in order? A, oral anal phallic latency genital. B, anal oral phallic latency genital. C, oral phallic anal latency genital. Or D, phallic oral anal latency genital. Again, pause the video, give it some time, unpause it, and we'll take it from there. Okay, if you picked A, then you are correct. Remember, <laughs> the acronym, uh, out and proud, let's get it. So out is oral. So both of these start with oral. And, which is A, and that's the anal. And this one starts with uh, P, which is the phallic. And that's the third one because it's O for out. A, and, proud is P. L is latency for let's. And G is for genitals for get it. Out and proud, let's get it. And um, this isn't asking for this, but we know that oral is from zero to one because we know uh, if you uh, one, three, six, puberty, adulthood. So and we just match those numbers with the out and proud. Let's get it. The O A P L G. And then it's everything past it. So if it's one. It's one and everything before, which is birth to one. If it's uh, three, so everything um, before three, so it's one to three. Then six, again, before six, so it's three to six. And then that's when we go into the puberty and then finally adulthood. So that's just a way to remember. And again, um, pick an acronym that works for you because you want to be able to associate it again whatever acronyms you come up with for not just with this Freud topic, but any topic in general, you want to be able to associate that with whatever topic you're studying. So it's easy, not just throwing out things that start with G and A and things of that nature.
And don't forget to check the description box below. In the description box, I put a list of resources for you to check out so you can get just a, a better understanding of the information. And remember, keep in mind, we don't need to know every single piece of detail information about every single right we don't need to know you know uh what year did freud invent this and and how many people did he do this and that and we need to know a general overview of freud of the topics covered in this video and it's good to check out the resources it's a pretty quick read go through it and be like okay i get a understanding of where freud was proposing and how when we see it on the exam and the questions, we can apply it. Because again, if they're asking things about the reality principle, it's like, okay, they're talking about the ego. If they're talking about developing certain fixations, the question wants to know what stage did that adult uh, most likely have trouble in, then we want to be able to say, oh, I know about the phallic stage, the anal stage, the, the oral stage, and we can just kind of match the fixations with whatever stage they will develop in. Okay guys, that's it for today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on the notification bell um, so you'll be updated when I drop new videos. And in the description below, I made another Instagram account. So give that Instagram account a follow because I plan to make that Instagram account specifically for uh, rate two content related to the LSW and LCSW exam so that while we're going through it um, it's just another resource to kind of keep that keep keep our minds stimulated with content related to the exam so thank you guys and I'll see you next video bye